Hey, good day everybody. This is going to be a short video. If you haven't seen already, please check out Andrew's nice longer video on the ranks of after the Moreland series and then a little bit of a preview into this series. This is just going to be a quick about five, six minute preview on the Phillies and Mets series to let me say all my key points and more rants about the team. Arietta has pitched, pitched really well. His best game this season is against those Metropolitans at New York. He pitched seven inning giving up only two, walking one, and getting seven strikeouts. He did give up seven hits, so a hit per inning. But he never he never got into issues much in that game. And he, so if he can continue to pitch solid against the Mets, that would be huge for us tonight. We, getting at least six out of him is pretty pivotal in how we had to use our pen because of all the games in secession. And obviously we know we don't have a pen other than Blake Parker and JoJo Romero for the most part recently. So... You don't want to have to really use them, in other words. So, the Phillies need to figure it out. As Ricky Batalico said in the post game. they seem to have defeat written on their face. And I'm saying this in a different way because he basically said that they seem to have no desire. But where they seem to be defeated to start the game where it seems like and like I was saying, they have defeat written on their face basically as the game starts. They're not running out balls. They're not showing a lot of hustle like they did in the good stretch where they won 10 of 11. And now they lost a lot in, I think it was 8 of 11 or 8 of 12 or something like that they said on the post game. So they went right back the other way. You can't do that. If you're supposed to be a bigger market team, you're supposed to be a team that's building to compete and building to be one of the better teams in the league, well, it definitely ain't going too well. Because, again, September rolls around, and you can't figure it out. Yes, you have injuries, but let me tell you, the Yankees have injuries, and before guys started coming back, they started getting going, and now they have stand back. And then you have the Rays had a lot of injuries this year to a lot of their bullpen and pitchers, and just as always, they plucked and put people in. The A's now have a lot of injuries, so we'll see... Where that not a lot, but of but key injuries. So we'll see where that goes. And they've kept plucking away. They blew a lead to the Mariners, then took out that anger on them in the second game of the doubleheader. So injuries isn't an excuse, and nothing. Re- the, the the Phillies also replaced bad with worse. I mean, Brandon Workman hasn't done anything since he's got here, and David Phelps has turned to crap. So the Phillies bullpen is the opposite of the Midas touch. Everything they touch turns to crap rather than gold. Uh, unless if you're Blake Parker or Jojo Romero. So they need to figure it out. Is it coaching in the bullpen? Maybe. Uh, because obviously some of these guys have been a lot better. Price doesn't coach the bullpen. You have a bullpen coach and you have a pitching coach. I think Price, because of how good Wheeler and Nola has done, I think he's done a pretty good job. Arietta is kind of just at the end at this point. So even getting those few good starts out of him and making him at least even in games, he stinks, look more aggressive this year and attacking the zone. I think that's a good thing for Price as well. And then Eflin's always been an up and down innings eater. So there's no change there except for the fact that he isn't throwing up in the zone and trying to do crazy stuff that his pitching repertoire is not designed to do. So I think Brian Price is doing a very good job as the pitching coach with our starting rotation. Now, our bullpen coach, that might be a completely different story. Some of the guys look like they're slinging at something. And also, the thing is, Glenn Tech's supposed to be an analytical GM. Getting a bunch of pitchers that feature, as a Batalico and Barkin talked about in a post game about a week or so ago, one pitch as their main pitch, and if they don't have that, they're screwed, is not analytical at all. Analytics is getting... Pitchers that you know have the stuff and have a couple pitches and have a fallback plan where Nearest has no fallback plan if his splitter stinks. Hunter has no fallback plan if his cutter stinks. Uh, Blake Parker actually this year has thrown his breaking ball more and fastball more, but his splitter still is feature pitch, but he's pitching amazing. But he's also mixed in some stuff more. I don't know why other guys can't do this. Nearest needs to have confidence in his fastball, or I hate to say it, but he's probably towards the end of a short relief career for a reliever because the league seemed to have figured him fully out now. Now it's time for him to adjust. Hunter is already in his mid-30s, getting towards his mid-30s, so maybe this is just him slowing down, but he's always been a guy that's been able to be more consistent, so it could be coaching also, maybe, but if not, I mean, you're just getting guys. David Hale's a journeyman. We got him. 
he was the first guy we made a move, I think, because Girardi in that one press conference kind of called out Glenn Tech. But either way, this bullpen needs to get to go. And the only chance you have to compete and get anywhere and also go on a run again is like the bullpen was pitching significantly better. Hunter actually got it together during the run. Nearest had a couple good outings during that run. So you need guys like Morgan, who's back now. Suarez, I'm hoping, went down to the training site, maybe to get stretched out to start starting again, because is he potentially one of the better starters? I don't know. I don't know what he's going to be as a starter. I liked what I've seen last year, not as much this year, coming back from injury as a reliever, but he does have control of the zone. He's a good pitcher at being able to throw within the realms of the strike zone. And the Phillies need somebody like that where Velasquez misses a spot all the time. That experiment should already have been over and done with. As Andrew said on the podcast yesterday, please check that out if you haven't already. And like, comment, and subscribe as well. We appreciate all the follows and support. Thank you, everyone. But again, they just need to figure this out. It's on management, not uh, the, the upper management, not as much Joe Girardi. The biggest thing... That moon with Girardi is when you have a starter, you need to push your starters more. You can't sometimes you take starters out, as I think everybody we've seen people complain on Twitter too early for a bullpen that stinks. So even if, like for example, Arietta has ninety five pitches going into the seventh today, I would put him in because what what, what else are you going to do unless if you want to keep running out Parker and and then you want to put JoJo in for the eighth, seventh, or eighth inning? So I mean. You don't have a lot of options here, and that's why I'm not really blaming Girardi for necessarily mismanaging the bullpen, but what I do blame him for is sometimes taking out starters too early because you don't have a good bullpen. And the guy that the guys, excuse me, that your GM traded for are were having down years in Boston and Hembray and Workman. They did not look as good in the sharp they traded for them and then they look even worse. And then Hale's just a journeyman that pitches very meh except for against us. And it was having a solid year for the Yankees. But when you looked at his inner numbers, like whip uh, and all that good stuff, he wasn't amazing. He just had a good ERA and some good numbers. That's why I'm saying Mac Lentak is the most unanalytical talked about before when we got him to be analytical GM of mankind. You don't keep Vince Velasquez. What numbers have you seen analytically other than maybe movement on his pitches that stay right over the plate anyway? So it doesn't matter how much movement you have if you're throwing a duck ball up there that... Uh, that a six-year-old could hit. So the the Phillies really just need to have somebody grasp the momentum for him. Harper's been off a little bit lately. Kingery came in and played a good game yesterday. Of course, had that home run. So hopefully he's able to get going. Other than yesterday, Hazley has been very, very solid for this team. That's something Andrew and I don't see eye to eye on at all. I believe Hazley's going to be a center fielder for this team for years to come, by the way. So I would say that this team... The keys are someone needs to jump it and get the momentum going. Hopefully, Arietta again can can get that going against the Mets and be a stopper. This video could go a little long. It's at eight minutes now, so it'll be at about six, but so be it. I think you'll enjoy the rant. And then, obviously, Girardi has to let some guys go. I don't care. I don't care if you want to save him for the postseason. You're not going anywhere in the postseason with this bullpen. If you want to try to get to the postseason – and try to win, you got to keep your starters the most confident as possible and be able to try to use the bullpen the least as possible to win a series. Because unless if things change and you have more than just Parker and Romero that are consistent in the bullpen, you're not going deep anyway. So you might as well just try to get there for the first time in the year. Push the starters a little bit. And then three is Harper. And then when JT comes back, you hope he gets going. And then Bohm can has to continue to be money as a guy that – Definitely, if he continues to do wood, has a ch- good has a chance to win the Rookie of the Year. So tonight, we have Arietta going up against Rick Porcello. Uh, I believe this time around, we're going to be able to jump on Porcello and have a more better productive game and not look good at times and then still let him kind of push along and battle through the game and do his thing. I mean... He pitched six inning against us and gave up two. He pitched one less inning than Jake last game. So I believe we're going to do better than that against him this time. But my keys for this game is if he's able to play back-to-back. Scotty put a good swing on that ball. I think that should get him going. Need Bryce to get going off of a guy like Porcello. And then I believe Knapp will be in this game after Morcan. Also, congratulations to him. Very good, in my opinion, game caught. Looked good behind the plate. Got a hit and put a nice swing. 
on another ball that he get, flew out on. So he looked good to me, but Napper will be in this game, I believe. And he's looked good this year, too. So we need those two to step up until JT comes back in probably a day or some change with that hip flexor. And then who knows how much he's going to be catching because it's not the smartest decision to put a guy back at catcher with a hip flexor. And the fact that Hoskins is out for an extended time will make more sense to put JT at first base, keep Boehm at third base, and Segura blows at third base. And then put JT, obviously, at first, have Kingery at second, and then you have Diddy at third, and then but Diddy at short, excuse me, and Boehm at third. I think that's what you should do. And then Segura, if you want to keep him at second, you can do that. You can also DH him some since, uh, or DH JT some if you want to. You have a bunch of different options there. But Segura, you might not want to DH since he's a pretty solid fielding at second. I think he only looked average fielding at third, so I wouldn't put him back at third. His best fielding position at this point of his career honestly seems to be second base. So if you're going to play him in the field, that should be second base. But knowing them, they'll put him at some stupid position. But anyway, the Phillies just kind of need to get going. They need to get it working here, and they need to get moving because you don't have time to blunder in a 60-game season. You went on a little skid here, obviously. Well, actually a big skid to now bring you back down to 500. In our last 10, we're on a three-game losing streak. We're four and six. We need to turn that around right now. Even six and four with how we looked in our last 10, I will be happy with. I hope we can maybe go seven and three, but six and four, I would be happy Murray and Jolly about because that would get us right back in a better spot in the top eight and not at seven where Gabe's Giants are right on our tail at eight. So... Let's get moving, Phillies. Let's get that motivation going. And also, let's hope Wheel is back soon, who did play catch and throw in the bullpen a few times. So hopefully those are all good signs. Moving to him pitching likely on Thursday would be my guess, if he's able to come back. So have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everyone. This has been a look ahead and a rant about the Phillies and a look ahead to the Phillies and Mets series that we have to take two out of three in. I'm not making a prediction because that's just ridiculous to try to do with this baseball team right now. But in terms of what we have to do to be in this position we want to be in after the series, we must win two out of three. So peace out, everyone. Stay cool and peace.